Hello everyone. So I'm uh, full of turkey uh, and I haven't had any caffeine so this may be a little bit of a laid-back uh, episode. I've decided I'm not going to do the optimization and the reason is that usually when something changes because a version change happened you want to give it a month or two to settle down because um, oftentimes the developers in this case Unity realize that they did something wrong uh, and they release a bug fix and it's always annoying to go out of your way to fix something only to have it change again. So for now I'm going to go ahead and just leave it like it is. Um, I've simplified the terrain somewhat so that I get more speed out of it um, and now it's almost unnoticeable the slowdown but on the other hand the terrain is very simplistic. Uh, so what we're going to do now is instead we're going to work on inventory. Now inventory uh, is, right now I've already got something where when you hit space a module drops out of the sky and lands on the ground. An inventory will simply be a list of those sorts of things. So let's go ahead and create the scripts that we're going to need. This is take two, which is why this is, this is missing, because this is actually what used to be the inventory script. The first take, nothing was wrong with it except for I almost fell asleep halfway through. So. Try not to do that. <laughs> so we need an inventory, and we also want an inventory object. Now the reason that we can't just use a game object or a mono behavior is because we need a variety of complicated uh, display options. So the inventory object class will allow us to have those display options on every inventory item. The inventory itself is just a list of inventory objects at this stage. We want it to be a list rather than a uh, array because lists are easier to manipulate. We also need to have it so that we know which inventory is the active inventory and this actually can get quite complicated in my game because there will be multiple planets and each one of them would have different stashes and different inventory items. And we also need that's the actual item that we have selected at the moment. So active inventory equals this and now if selected item equals null then selected item equals inventory object uh, sorry items zero except what if we don't have any items in our inventory we don't want to select the zeroth item out of a list of nothing so we have to just double check and make sure that we have some items and there we go so our next step is to put that on something and obviously it should go in the same place everything else is yeah. the main camera so now you can see that we have an inventory script down here with items. It's empty. Select the item. Also empty. We don't have anything of type inventory object to add to it. Now these are the shrink that down. These are the two items that I have that can be deployed. I've got this big one, and I've got this little one. So the question is, I need to add those to the inventory, but there is no uh, inventory item. Uh, class on them. So uh, in order to put the inventory item class I could add it as a class here but I think a better idea is to make droppable module inherit from it. No, come on. So now both of them are part of the inventory object class set and that means that they can be added in. But we have to be a little bit careful because void start and void update don't play well with inheritance. Instead they need to be public override void start and public override void update. Of course that only applies if we make inventory object public virtual void start and public virtual void because that way the system knows that inventory object has the start the start and this update function that are probably going to get overridden hold on my mouse is clicking I'm sorry if you're hearing weird noises through my mic I think that my mic is rattling well, like I can't tell for sure um, anyhow let's go ahead and add those two items to our inventory list 
So here you can click on this lock button, and that means that it won't go away. It'll stay right here. So we can go over into our space inventory and grab these two items. And normally they would have popped up over here in the inspector, but we've locked it. And then we can just drag them on, like plunk. And then unlock it, or else you'll be really confused later on. All right, so we now have the inventory, but we don't access it yet. So, I mean, if we hit play, we'll see that this pops up as Drop Depot, but we're not actually doing anything with that inventory. We need to hook it in to the part of the player I.O. that drops stuff. So let's go into the player I.O. class. Here is our drop something from a space function. If we press the jump button, which is something that we'll change later, but for now it's just space, then uh, figure out if we are going to be dropping something, and if we are, grab our orbital inventory and drop it. Our orbital inventory is a game object that we set, but we obviously don't want to just set it. We want it to be dependent on the inventory that we're using. So, return inventory.activeInventory. Dot uh, uh, selected. Why is it not? Return invent. The new mono behavior is no better than the old. It's still super annoying. Fuck you, mono develop. Now we have to return dot game object because this is actually a game object, not an inventory object. So we actually there is a special case here that we're not dealing with, and that is if there is no inventory item selected, then this will actually error out because we're trying to get the game object of a null. So we're gonna say if if it equals null, then return null. Otherwise, return the game object. All right. Get or set. X. Did I screw that up? Oh, that must be why Mono Develop was whining. <sighs> All right. So if we look at our, where is our main camera? We can see that Drop Depot 1, that's the big one. That's the one that's currently selected. Wham! And now we're going to go ahead and uh, change that. Pause. Drop Pab. Go on, go on. Okay, I'll just click here. No? I wanna. I guess I can't just drag it down. How annoying. Well, we could, we could force it, but. It, it's just a change in selection, but we obviously want an easier way to make that change in selection besides uh, uh, tr forcibly dragging things in the inspect inspector view. So let's just go ahead and quickly add a very simple set of tools. So that function will simply select the next inventory item. And this one will select the previous inventory item. There's not really any reason to abstract them out. We could if we needed to, um, but no, there's no benefit to it. This is super simple stuff. Inventory inv equals active inventory. Uh, just because I don't want to type active inventory over and over and over. If inv equals null, then return. If inv dot items dot count equals zero, return. If inv dot selected item equals null, then inv dot selected item equals inv dot inventory. Uh, sorry, dot items zero. There we go. Uh, and then otherwise, and now here's where the actual logic goes. Basically, we've covered all the edge cases, and this is where we actually go ahead and select the next item in our inventory. If index is greater than or equal to inv.items.count, then index equals zero, and then we say inv.selectItem equals inv.itemsIndex. And there we go, we just grabbed the index of the current item, we added one to it, and we wrapped it if necessary. 
And if you've done any programming before, this should be very, very familiar. Um, basic stuff, basic stuff. And of course, this one wraps the other direction. Simple enough. Now we have to hook the select next and select prev up so that the player can use them. Let's go ahead and make it so that our mouse cursor does it for the moment. A scroll wheel. Not our mouse cursor, our scroll wheel. As I said, lots of turkey. Um, uh, input dot get axis mouse scroll wheel. Unlike most uh, axes, this is actually an event axis. Um, the uh, something like if you hit up, it like the vertical axis go to one and stay there for as long as you hold up. But a mouse wheel is an individual event, so it doesn't stay anywhere. So we can use this in lieu of a get button down or whatever. Now obviously this is a placeholder action. We don't want to blindly have mouse scrolling be the actual thing which does all the excuse me, all the work. So I'm gonna hit space and bring down a drop depot. Blunk. Now look in the lower right hand corner down here, and I'm going to press mouse press the mouse wheel. Switch it over to the drop tab. Drop some drop tabs. Mouse wheel. Drop some drop depots. So that's the functional part of the inventory. The next thing we need to do is we need to make it so that uh, we can uh, pop up a window for selecting our inventory. Um, and that's going to be next episode. But this is plenty for this episode.